Hello and welcome to Here Be Monsters, where today I'm talking about my first foreign feature. From 2013, this is Blood Glacier, an Austrian film by director Marvin Krenn. The film is set at an Alpine research station and concerns what happens when a small group of scientists discover a blood-like substance seeping from a nearby glacier, hence the title. For the most part, the film plays out a lot like John Carpenter's The Thing, only with a lot less paranoia. This isn't a bad thing, and honestly, with the isolated, snowy, mountainous location, it was bound to be a comparison. Also, since Blood Glacier isn't tackling the same themes as The Thing, it allows the film to be its own entity. It even has its own McCready in the form of station technician Yannick, who spends a lot of the early part of the film drinking, grousing about the work, and hanging out with his dog Tinny. Character-wise, despite initially coming off as unlikable, Yannick's quiet moments with Tinny and later on his old flame Tanya show a more caring side and they kind of do make you want him to survive. The other scientists sadly don't get as much characterization, but because the film introduces them and then establishes even more on top of that, including the previously mentioned Tanya, it means everyone gets a lot less focus. The only ones who do stand out are Tanya, whose past with Yannick allows for some tension between them throughout most of the film, and the Minister and the Environment. Who surprised me? When I first saw her, I was expecting someone who'd most likely die screaming to one of the monsters. Instead, she was one of the most capable and constantly reliable people outside of the main character, taking charge when the survivors had to split into two groups, and taking some initiative when the creatures attack. As for the creatures, which are really hybrid beasts made from the local wildlife, we get hints of their existence quite early in the film too. No actual sightings until the end of Act 1, but they make their presence known to the audience beforehand. I've seen some films where the makers try to pretend it's not a monster for a good length of the runtime, so I appreciate it when they drop any pretense and just outright go, Yep, it's a monster movie. There isn't a great deal of story to go on in the film. After establishing the characters and introducing the blood and the hybrids, it turns straight into a survival story. It's no bad thing, a lot of monster movies go this way, but I think with the short runtime and around 10 characters and 4 hybrids, it does make the film a tiny bit weaker because of it. Some of the location shots make up for it though. The vast sweeping shots of the Alps from the foothills the minister's party's walking up to the barren mountain tops where the station is, all show off how gorgeous it is. Unlike the thing which made its location look hostile and desolate, in contrast, this looks inviting even if it's covered in some sort of red viscous microorganism. The music as well is nice and atmospheric, its use of strings is great at building slow burn intention, and also adds to the majesty of the surroundings and the action, you know, depending on what's going on in the scene. So, let's get on to the monsters. That's right, we've got more than one. One of the things I really loved about the film was the basic concept of the blood. With a near limitless ability to mutate and create new creatures from whatever had consumed it, it had a lot of potential for nastiness. We only get to see about four and a half variations it can make, but all are different. Mostly they're animals combined with insects, but they're realised with jarring visuals. Compound eyes and mandibles on mammals and birds, extra pairs of legs, they look great when you can see them. Sadly, one of the letdowns of the film is sometimes the hybrids are hidden either by a choice of the camera angle or the lighting. Some shots are so dark you can't tell what part of the hybrid you're looking at. Aside from the eyes on some of them which just glow a sickly bright yellowy colour, mostly they just look like mounds of mangy fur and mandibles. Even during the autopsy scene, which is usually great for giving you a cold clinical look at whatever's on it, seem to skip over showing you entirely what the creatures look like. That being said, when we do get a clear look at them, they all look unique. While there's some similarities, they've all got their own shape and form. Also, on the copy of the DVD I've got, it does have a small gallery of concept designs for the hybrids, so that at least gives you some idea of what they look like. Or might have. As quick and simple monster movies go, Blood Glacier is alright. We get enough insight into the characters to not want them to die horrifically, and the concept of the microbes mutating things is an interesting one. And for a film which mentions environmental issues like climate change, it isn't at all breachy. Aside from the issues I mentioned earlier, I enjoyed this one. If you're interested, based on what I've talked about, and you're okay with watching subtitle films, I'd definitely give this one a go. Despite the sometimes hard to determine visuals, it has some great ideas, and is pretty much short enough not to outstay its welcome.
Well, making this one was a barrel of laughs. But despite the audio issues and other editing, post-production, fun and games, let's talk about the picture. Yeah, finding visual reference for the actual creatures in this one was really hard. There was like only one decent shot of the Ibex and about two for the Falcon and the Fox Beetle, respectively. I couldn't find anything on the Woodlouse. Although, mind you, that one was the least seen in the actual film. They talked about it and you could see it curled up into like an actual ball, but you never saw it unfurled or at least not anything other than like a quick snap cut or something like that. Looking back now, I kind of wish I'd left it out of the picture because it's the only one which doesn't match the other t uh, the other three. Uh, I'm kind of pleased with how the Ibex turned out though, especially the wings on it and uh, the weird jaw thing it's got going on. And I kind of like the way uh, I've pl uh, placed both the falcon uh, fly and the fox beetle thing, just so it, you, your eyes drawn all the way through it. While I was thumbnailing, I did have a go at a couple of different shots, you know, like composition, uh, compositionally. But the one I went with in the end kind of is the uh, what I think is the best. Again, if I had decided to leave out the woodlouse, I probably would have gone with a different look. Although, with the glacier in the background, which I might add something to digitally, uh, you know, after this just to see if that makes it pop a bit more, but the textures, I'm quite happy with. The fur, the horns, uh, the feathers, I kind of like how it all turned out that way. I could have gone a bit darker for the overall piece, but... I don't know. I wanted to show what the monsters, uh, what I thought the monsters would actually look like, you know, if they were given uh, a bit more of a standard spotlight, not the, not all the dark, hard to see stuff in the film. Another thing I do have to mention, I did end up having to cut a lot of the process out at the end. This was more to do with the fact that uh, my head kept getting in the way of the camera. And sadly, you lost a little bit of the detail. Uh, but I caught most of it, and you got a lot of the early pencil and line art stages. It was pr uh, pretty much towards the end where I started adding all like the more fur details and the shadows. That's kind of where I really got... I think I just got too invested in the drawing and forgot I was recording it, so I've kept in as much as I could. But it's not all of it. Out of all the pieces I've done for this series so far, this has been my least favourite. I think it was mainly because of the lack of visual uh, reference relating to the creatures, which I don't think I had enough confidence, you know, when I started. I'm reasonably happy with how the final piece turned out, but uh, I feel it could have been better. I still like the film, don't get me wrong, but mm, this isn't one of my best pieces of work. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a comment, like, subscribe, all of that fun stuff, and I will see you in the next one, which will be out quicker. Hopefully.